All right, so we're doing section 8.2. This is the second uh, lesson from chapter 8. This is going to be the second section that's going to be on your quiz on Wednesday. Um, and this is basically just utilizing the explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence. So we're going to try to use it a little bit more. But you did notice, uh, I know you guys were writing it down when I was talking about some other stuff. There is an alternate form that you can kind of use. Now, the plus C... Um, that's a different story for a different time, but I want you guys just to notice that the a sub n equal to dn plus c, the common difference is in front of the n, okay? So um, we've noticed that if I get uh, the original explicit formula, this one right here, okay, if I get that one and I simplify it by distributing the d into the n minus 1, you'll notice that you'll get a dn minus d. This part is right here. Okay? The c value is basically uh, negative d plus a plus a1. That's what that c value is. Okay? But we're not going to really discuss it too much, but I just want you guys to know that dn comes from distributing the d value in the explicit formula. Okay? Um, now, Remember this piece right here, like this is going to be really important for us, okay, because this section deals a lot with that part right there, all right? So, example number one, and I'll leave this right here. Find the common difference and the term named, okay? Find the common difference and the term named. Again, I'm leaving that formula visible at the very top because I want you guys to see what I highlighted, Okay, the common difference is in front of the letter N. It's like stuck to it. Okay? So to find the common difference for part A and B, it should be relatively easy. Just look for the number that's in front of the letter N. That's right next to it. Right? Not added or subtracted. The thing that's multiplying. Okay? And then for the term name, we just got to plug in a number. And that's all. So these are pretty easy problems. They don't take very long. So for part A, what is my common difference? What is my D value for part A? Remember, it's the number that's stuck to the letter N. Three, right? So there you go. You didn't have to do much for it. It's, it's right here. OK? And then they say find a sub 20. That means just plug in the number 20. So a sub 20 is 3 times 20 minus 10. That's 60 minus 10. So that's 50. So here are my two answers. D is equal to 3. a sub 20 is equal to 50. That's pretty easy, right? It doesn't take a lot of effort. It's just identify it by, by looking for it, and then plug in a number and simplify. So for part B, what's my D value? Negative 5. So good, it's right here. Negative 5. Okay? And uh, A sub 10 will be negative 7 minus 5 times 10. And then just simplify that. So 5 times 10 is 50. Remember, you've got to multiply before you add or subtract. So this is negative 50 total. And negative 7 minus 50 is negative 57. That's A sub 10. So here are your two answers that they're asking for. So again, they're not terribly difficult problems. It's just uh, plugging in numbers or identifying by looking. Okay? So just identify by looking at the um, explicit formula, okay? Remember, the D value is always a thing that is stuck next to the N, okay? It's always stuck next to the N. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you guys notice that this is basically Y equal to MX plus B. That's the exact formula that they're using. They're just rewriting it with different letters, but it really is Y equals MX plus B, the slope-intercept form. Okay, um, so anyway, just, just a really quick uh, FYI there, in case it looked uh, familiar to you. 
Here's example two. Given a sub 1 and d, the common difference, find the explicit formula and then find the term named. Find the explicit formula and find the term named. Now for this one, we're, we're going to use, well, we're going to, let's think about the two formulas that we have, okay? We have a sub n equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, and we have a sub n is equal to uh, dn plus c. We can use either one of those two, but I'm going to choose to use the top one. Okay, the reason is because I have information that's given to me that has stuff that I can use up top. I have a sub 1. Notice the bottom equation doesn't have an a sub 1. It has a c, but notice there's no c that was given to me. Um, I do have a d value that will fit into both, right? But the top equation, I have an a1 and a d value, so I can plug stuff into that top equation, okay? So I'm going to use the top equation for this, and you'll most likely be using that top equation for it uh, when you guys are doing um, these problems. So um, here we go. A sub n is equal to A sub 1. That's going to be 10 plus n minus 1 times 5. Okay, so there's my explicit formula, okay? Now, you can always simplify it if you want to make it easier to plug numbers in. You don't have to, but let's go ahead and simplify it. So this would be a sub n is equal to 10 plus 5n minus 5. And let's continue to simplify. a sub n is equal to 5n. Uh, 10 minus 5 is 5. So here you go. There's my equation. All right? You didn't have to do that. But sometimes it's easier when you plug numbers in. I mean, not always, but it doesn't hurt. So there we go. I found my explicit formula. Now they want me to find a sub 12. So a sub 12 will be 5 times 12 plus 5. 5 times 12, uh, that's 60. So it's 60 plus 5. And 60 plus 5 is 65. So notice, this is kind of like the problems that we just did in the first example. Just that in the first example, they gave me the equation, and then I had to find a specific number, right? A specific term. Here, I'm going to have to create the equation and then find the specific term, okay? So very similar to what we just did, um, just that we had to do a little bit extra, right? Find the equation first, whereas at first they gave it to us. Here we had to solve for it. So let's do another one like this. There's the first term. There's the d value. And then they want me to find a sub 30, the 30th term. So remember, use that top equation that we talked about, a sub n equal to a sub 1 plus parenthesis n minus 1 n parenthesis times d. Uh, use the original explicit formula. Plug in your values. Go ahead and solve for it. Okay? I'll just give you a little bit of time as we talk about that. Try to solve for the explicit formula. And then once you find the explicit formula, uh, plug in 30 and see what you get. I'm just going to give you another 20 more seconds. Then I'll get started with it. But at least try to see if you can get this thing started on your own. All right, so here we go. I'll write out the formula because uh, we don't actually get a chance to see it. I didn't put it on the side, so here it is. 
Okay, that's the one we're going to use. Uh, let's plug in our a sub 1, so that would be negative 3, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 2. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that. So a sub n is negative 3, plus 2n minus 2. And I'll simplify it. And I'm going to kind of do something a little different here. Um, I'll keep the dn on the right side. It's okay if it's on the right side, not the left side. So in other words, instead of the, the, the dn being in front and then the minus 5 being in the back, I'm just going to leave it like that. In case you guys are given an equation like this and they're like, find the common difference, well, it's going to be 2. It's just not in the front, right? They just kind of flipped it. But that's okay, all right? So there's my explicit formula. You could have written 2n minus 5, and you're going to be correct, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Now, they want a sub 30. That means i got to plug in a 30 into my equation. So uh, 2 times 30 is 60. That's negative 5 plus 60. So that's 55. That's the 30th term. You guys are writing this out. Um, Right now, as I was finishing the problem, I kind of felt like a little something on the top of my head. Like, a, I don't know if it was a little bug or something. Um, and it reminded me of last night when I was trying to go to bed. My wife's like, I think there's a mosquito in here, right? And I'm like, I don't hear anything. She's like, no, I know there is. So, you know, you're just laying down and you're kind of falling asleep. And then you hear it. You're like, yep, there it is. So we turn on the lights. We find it. Eventually, we catch it. Um, but it reminds me of a quote. Because um, sometimes, you know, as a, as a teenager, you, you feel like people don't listen to you and you feel small, right? And the quote says, if you ever think that someone who's small cannot make a difference, try going to sleep when a mosquito is in your room. That's like one of the hardest things for me. I can't because you keep hearing, right? Something so small can consistently stay in your ear, right? So... So yeah, you guys can make a difference. It doesn't matter how small you start. You can always make a difference. As mosquito does, right? I just hope nobody swats you and gets rid of you. But, but yeah, mosquito definitely makes a big difference. And it's tiny. It was a little tiny one, too. It was little. She's like, that couldn't have been it. I'm like, that, that was it. That was it. Just a little tiny bug. All right. Uh, I think we have, um, there, I think it's example three and four, and that's it. Yeah. And 4 is something we already did. It's not anything new. Just a real quick review of something that we did before in, uh, in 8.1. So example 3 is like the last of the new type of problems. So example number 3 says, if the sequence is arithmetic, find the term named. So first you're going to have to check to see if it's an arithmetic sequence. Okay? If it isn't, then just write no, and you're done. Okay, because there's no way you can find a sub 20 if it's not an arithmetic sequence. Um, but if it is, then you got to write the whole equation out. Okay, and then plug in a 20 once you write the equation. Now, I made sure this one was. Okay, um, the, the way you test if something is an arithmetic sequence is you're going to have to check as you jump from one number to the next, does it keep changing by the same exact number? So from negative 6 to negative 3, we add 3. From negative 3 to 0, we add 3. From 0 to 3, we add 3. And from 3 to 6, we add 3. So is this an arithmetic sequence? Yeah. I kind of already told you, right? But yeah, this would be an arithmetic sequence because it's always changing by the same amount. So that means that D is 3. What's my A sub N? Uh, sorry, a sub 1. What's my first term? Negative 6. Remember, the only time you don't know if it's your first term is, uh, forgive me for doing this, but look at this one. 
31 does not have to be my first term because if you see there's the ellipses on the left side, right? Those three dots, which means there's more stuff to the left. So maybe 31 is the second term or the 50th term, right? We don't know. But this one does not have that dot, dot, dot in the front, which means that is the first term. Now that I know my first term and my d value, let me go ahead and write my equation. Uh, I'll write down the equation again. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is negative 6, plus n minus 1 times 3. Remember, you can plug in a 20 now, or you can continue to simplify. Let's just continue to simplify here. a sub n is equal to negative 6 plus 3n minus 3, which means that a sub n is 3n, bless you, minus 9. Okay? There's my uh, explicit formula. I'm going to kind of move to the side to plug in a sub 20. So a sub 20 is 3 times 20 minus 9, which is 60 minus 9, which is 51. So the 20th term would be the number 51. And then your explicit formula is right there. None of these problems are meant to like really be like impossible. Okay, they're all pretty straightforward. They're not trying to be tricky. You do have to remember your formulas though, right? That way you know like, oh, I found the first term. I know my d value. Where should I plug that in? There's a formula for that, right? Um, if they're just asking you what's the d value and the equation looks like this, then the d value is pretty easy. It's going to be the number that's right next to the n, right? Even if we didn't know, we knew that already, but notice it's in the actual explicit formula, right? So you can always find it right there. Here's the last one. This is a review. So you guys should be able to do this on your own. Okay, this is from last uh, Friday. Find the missing terms, right? Whenever you have to find these missing terms, what is the one piece that's missing that we have to figure out? You guys remember? It has something to do with the blanks in between. The, yeah, the common difference, right? There was a couple of steps, right? First step, you're supposed to subtract big number minus small number, right? And the reason why we do that is because you've got to find the value of D. So 51, uh, sorry, 55, not 51, 55 minus 31, that's 24. Second step, how many steps does it take to get from 31 to 55? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps. So number of steps, six. Step three, you got to find the value for D. And the way you do that is you get your answer from number one and you divide it by the answer of number two. 24 divided by six. So your D value is four. So all you have to do is add four from 31, and you'll fill in the blank. So 31 plus 4, that's 35. 35 plus 4, 39. 39 plus 4, that's 43. 43 plus 4, that's 47. 47 plus 4 is 51. And always check to make sure the last one works. 51 plus 4 is 55. That means everything is working out just fine. Every once in a while you add wrong or something and then you're like 51 plus something is 56 and you're like, wait a minute, it's supposed to be 55. What happened, right? And then you can double check, make sure you added everything correctly. Or maybe you got the wrong D value, okay? But this is from Friday. You guys did questions like this. There's going to be two questions like that on your homework as well, okay? Just to kind of refresh your memory.
So this is what your homework looks like uh, for today. Uh, like I said, we're still using the same equations, one little minor new one just to figure out the D value, but it's nothing that you're going to be using a lot, okay? So I'll go ahead and stop the video and give you guys the assignment.